Now I'd like to show you how to implement a sequence generator in LabVIEW. Suppose that we need to create a fixed set of periodic waveforms. For example, we could begin with a 4-bit register and say we wanted to make this pattern that eventually repeats. Now if we view the 4-bit value as a uh, initially a binary value, notice that's a 1 there since it's 0 later on, if we think of this as a 4-bit binary value with the most significant bit on top, least significant bit on the bottom, then in decimal we can write that as 4. And this would be 6. Here we have 7 and so forth. And again we see that the waveforms begin to repeat at 4. The numerical values provide a convenient way to specify all four bit values in one numerical value. All right. Now the hardware that is typically presented for a circuit like this is based on two parts. The first part would be a register that would be four flip-flops. We could use four D-type flip-flops for this purpose. We'll connect the clock to our system clock. We'll need some combinational logic called the next state decoder that translates the present value in the register to the next value to drop into the register on the subsequent clock cycle. All right, purely combinational logic right there. Now with this basic hardware structure in mind, let's look at the LabVIEW implementation. As with all of our other circuits, everything is contained inside of a while loop. The feedback node implements the 4-bit register. The fact that the clock is a periodic waveform is represented by the while loop that will perpetually evaluate its diagram. The first value in the sequence is 4, and that corresponds to the value that I'm specifying on the initializer terminal. Also note that I'm using the array style so therefore this array can be thought of as a 4-bit bus. Let me turn on context help to illustrate some of these nodes here. Boolean array to number accepts the 4-bit array and produces a numerical interpretation of that numerical value then operates the selector terminal on the case structure. And for our purposes, we can think of the case structure as implementing the complete combinational logic of the next state decoder. Inside the case structure, I'm using the number to Boolean array. Now, when the present value is 6, as selected by the case selector, we are supposed to be generating the value 7. Now, this particular VI, I have just a slight change there where I'm using 3. That could just as easily have been made a 7. When we're in 3, or 7, we go to pattern 12. When we're in pattern 12, we go to pattern 13, and so forth. Now here you can pick any of the sub-diagrams that you might like. Let's take a look at this in operation. I'm displaying both the case selector as well as the 4-bit value. And I'm using a timer inside the loop so that way we can paste the loop quite easily from the front panel. 
Should also point out that the array display always places the least significant bit on the left side and the most significant bit on the right side.